Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with the WCW NWA um, Saturday Night version for the 26th of May 1990. We open with a um, tag team affair uh, and obviously, you know, tag team is a major part of the old NWA and, and all of that. This happens to be uh, a TV champion Arn Anderson uh, or let's see here, uh, the kind of the promise of Bobby Eaton, Stan Lane defending against Ricky Morton, and Robert Gibson, Clash of Champions is announced. Also, Arn Anderson defeating Paul Drake with a DDT, and ultimately, um, you know, there's there's various other things here, but this particular first match here is. Um, a, uh, you know, uh, kind of a, a fire up with Tommy Rich and uh, uh, Johnny Ace in a squash match here, which isn't even on most of the results sites. Um, Sergeant Buddy Lee Parker, one of the opponents here, and again, kind of the the. The, the fire up, I think the main thing is on the idea that uh, Tommy Rich is kind of back and, and doing major things. Again, kind of the, the uh, double team tag off and uh, uh, working over the arm for a good bit here. Uh, not exactly your most uh, compelling match by any stretch of the imagination, but at the same time, um, kind of several back and forths and ultimately... Uh, getting a uh, super basic deal. Eventually, Sergeant Buddy Lee Parker and I believe Rick Fargo uh, kind of cut the ring off on one. Uh, Tommy Rich and Rich takes the majority of the match going back and forth and all the way around uh, trying to get a victory as quickly and efficiently as he can. Uh, and again, we kind of see the Breakup of the or the anger from Flair uh, about uh, things, the injury to the leg of Lex Luger, another major concern. Luger basically saying that his knee has been uh, completely blown out, but he will be back, and he is tired, very tired, of making uh, excuses. Also, the Mr. Wrestling 2 is back, and he is talking about the underhandedness of the horseman. Not necessarily sure where that's going in terms of a long-term story. As a matter of fact, it doesn't really go anywhere here in 1990. It's obviously a sign of the booking of Ole Anderson. A Arn Anderson, by the way, is out next, your TV champion. He's out next with the run of, um, you know, the the not run of the gauntlet, but run of uh, kind of challenging himself in a enhancement match way. Anderson, something as simple as just shaking the fingers before a lockup. Simple, simple stuff. Uh, a major part of what makes him set apart and different coming forward there. Then we see Anderson pinning Paul Drake with a DDT. One minute, 39 seconds. Uh, Mr. Two, Mr. Wrestling 2 provides guest commentary in the match during the contest. It's announced that Anderson... Would face Paul Orndorff at the Clash of Champions 11. Um, and it's just a, a weird time as uh, they haven't really found what they're doing with the Horsemen yet, but also it's kind of there. Uh, Cactus Jack fights Rocky King to a no contest when the NWA World Champion Ric Flair and Ole Anderson interrupt the match before it begins. Flair and Anderson confronting King concerning him. Uh, knowing that he knows who Flair's Flair surprise is and wouldn't tell. Basically, the horseman tried to rough it up. That surprise ends up being the junkyard dog, which I don't know was the best of decisions there. Uh, then we go to Doug Furness and Zan Panzer. Doug Furness, obviously, University of uh, Tennessee major standout. Furness, of course, they want him to be something major. It doesn't really come out that way, but it's uh, the attempt is there, the hope is there, and all of that. Uh, needless to say, certainly it's not uh, by any stretch of the imagination a, a bad thing, but I mean the Rocky King angle, King uh, doesn't necessarily want to be uh, back down. Rocky King uh, is uh, 
getting roughed up on the junkyard dog basically says he's going to take the uh, title of Ric Flair, which obviously doesn't end up happening, but that is the Clash of the Champions match that uh, leads everyone to kind of care about all of that. Um, and so Zan Panzer gets uh, kind of uh, just guzzled a bit with some mat wrestling. Uh, backflip from Doug Furness in the middle of the ring and a snap belly to belly suplex brilliantly done by the way uh, by Furness Furness also managing to do everything he possibly can with the drop kick under the chin and ultimately uh, getting things together there uh, then we go to Doom Doom in another squash match here uh, Doom of course uh, the tag team champions at the time and Ron Simmons, Butch Reed, a phenomenal tag team for that day and time. Big clotheslines from Ron Simmons, Doom, and, uh, or Reed and Simmons both. Super aggressive, uh, taking their opponents out in quick order. Snap suplexes getting o over uh, whoever they need to. And uh, Jerry Price and Tim Parker are their opponents for the day. Interesting that they put... Three tag team matches in a row to close the show. Didn't mean to rhyme there. Didn't know it was rhyme time. Anyway, um, but, you know, obviously Doom in complete dominance and control for the majority of the contest here. And, uh, um, uh, you know, hard kicks to the midsection along the way. And um, making things happen. Coming together and a deep uh, bit of um, they they show ruse report with the uh, superplex ruse or shoes with pockets for your feet. Uh, the Steiner brothers up next in an enhancement match, as mentioned, three tag teams back to back to back. Steiner brothers up with the second tag team match there. Steiner Rick Scott Steiner proving that he has. A good bit of uh, technical prowess at the time, uh, managing to try to get some degree of uh, advantage, and Steiner just dumps um, his adversary on his head there. Steiner's facing off against none other than um, Joe Cruz and Bubba Rose. Bubba Rose, what a name. Anyway... Uh, Scott Steiner managing to, or trying to, keep things going in his general direction and does the double underhook suplex. I mean, the Steiners, uh, I can definitely understand where people love the Steiners at the time. Scott Steiner also with a modified power slam, and I would not want to have been a uh, enhancement talent there. Bulldog by Rick Steiner, and um, then we go again to the review of the confrontation. And Ric Flair talking about facing off with the junkyard dog and not being happy. Still in a $1,500 suit, Ric Flair is not a happy guy with the run of things. The Road Warriors snack on Danger, Dine on Death, and they are ready to take on Doom and the Horsemen, whomever else is in their pathway. They make that perfectly clear. They are in a enhancement match to close the show here. Uh, Hawk press slamming one of the enhancement talents overhead, although having a little bit of difficulty getting the guy up when he finally gets him up there, does several reps, and off he goes. Then we go. Uh, again, the animal comes in, hits the shoulder tackle, and uh, going pretty aggressively there. Uh, needless to say, the road warriors get the doomsday device and make quick work. Of none other than Ned uh, Ned Bradley and Rick Fargo. To close the program here, we will be back with more right after this. <laughs> 